Hello, everyone. This is Colin Beckford from the Scales Podcast, and as you all know, we are approaching holiday season, which means it's time to look into some gifts, maybe some stocking stuffers, who knows. But what we do know is that GoYoExpert.com has you covered. Some good ideas for stocking stuffers are 50 center tracks from Yo-Yo Factory, or 200 Caribou Lodge snow tires, or even maybe, if your friend is lucky, 20 packs of 100 count kitty string 1.5. These are just some suggestions. You can even use the free shipping code SCALES, that is S-C-A-L-E-S, to make your order even better. Happy holidays and enjoy this episode. Hey, this is Mark McGarren from Caribou Lodge and you're listening to the SCALES podcast. I've been throwing the Kodiak a lot lately, which is Tessa's yo-yo, which she used to win the women's division at Worlds this past year. Um... I can't vouch for how good it is at that division, but I can say it's pretty good for another division, uh, unnamed one that starts with the number five. Uh, I've been pretty inspired by Takuma Inoue lately for winning worlds, which is awesome. Shout out to Takuma Inoue. Um, It's very strong, very solid, built like a Kodiak bear. Not saying that Tessa's like a bear, but her yo-yo is. so if you're looking to get into that division, uh, I would highly recommend this and check it out. Thanks. Hey, this is Mark McGarren and I'm here with Kieran Cooper. Um, we're going to talk about the Joycey Finals 2017. This is the Japan Open Yo-Yo Championship. There's a lot of really interesting freestyles and some cool takeaways from this contest so we're going to discuss it today one of the important things to note is that the joy c contest structure is a little different it's 70 30 tech and performance yeah so um the score breakdown actually is uh tech is 70 percent of the score uh normalized 270 points so i guess the the highest uh tech score we saw at the contest was a full to 70 which is shinji's uh two-way freestyle performance gets 30 points and uh that's split between three categories cleanliness choreography and overall presentation and um i guess uh, as a quick note there are no major deducts uh factored into the final score uh all of those are dealt with uh in minor deductions uh during the tech scoring um live another really interesting thing about this competition specifically regarding scoring is that joyc was one of the first sort of like modern debut of uh, debuts of like a new refined scoring system that sort of uh actually is done with digital clickers and uh the scores from these digital clickers are sent to uh, a computer and the computer displays uh, results on the screen live for viewers to see and potentially for players to see um I feel like this is really important because uh, with the displaying of results, a lot of players can sort of learn which tricks score and which tricks don't. Um, it's probably the most direct form of learning how to how to make tricks that score, and I sort of really appreciate that because judges really don't uh, disclose their results <laughs> after competitions, and I sort of feel like that's weird in a way. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's really cool, but I think... And we could probably talk about hours over like little things that they did in the clicking, but I guess it's good to note that each judge kind of has their own style and J- Japanese judges in particular have their own style. So it's like, I wouldn't go so far as to say like, oh, this specific thing scored a point when you saw it in someone's freestyle, it'll always right. score a point, you know? I sort of noticed that like a lot of people were complaining about this scoring display because like, they sort of felt like, you know, one judge was scoring things way too high and one was scoring things way too low. I feel like the point is that on the graph, you have to be paying attention to the slope of the scores because both judges, their scores took the same shape, which means that the results were going to be accurate anyways. So I guess that's sort of one thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So there was two scores being shown on the screen. Um, I'm assuming there was more than two tech judges. So do you know who specifically were like on each side of the clickers? I, the I do not know who the judges were. And I think there was intent in keeping that confident. And I feel like Taka had chimed in during the stream and said, you know, the identity of the judge doesn't matter. Just pay attention to the 
yo-yoing and the scores and um, the data will show the proof more than anything. So I think on screen, two judges were being displayed. I'm not sure if that was the total panel. I did notice that one judge was scoring a little bit higher than average and one was scoring lower, which um, I think that actually might produce more friendly numbers. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems like such a casual thing to start with at this contest, just, you know, oh, display the scores. But it could mean a lot, you know, in future where it might become a normal thing or yeah. yeah like this this has been like prototyped by taka for a while i think he had a, a hacked ds a uh, prototype that he made for in 2009 and all of those freestyles were scored on nintendo ds's um so this has actually been kind of in the making for a while and it's really interesting to sort of see it all come together at joic's okay so uh i guess we'll start with the winner of the 1a division which is yamato and yamato had a very clean freestyle i think he had a minus one i actually like this freestyle a lot i get another thing that's important to know about joycey was his two minute finals but i i think his performance was really good here i think it's one of the most enjoyable performances i've seen and i think it's like the most entertaining he could be for now given his type of oh, totally, and his yeah build. like i, I think well, i mean he obviously didn't score as high as hirotaka did um, i think he fell behind hirotaka by like 0.1 which could be I don't know, a, a couple clicks but he made up yeah. for all of that in evals and actually he Hirotaka by about two points overall, which is really interesting. I really liked Yamato's yeah. choice of music. I thought it was sort of a nice change of pace for him. I sort of like how he's venturing into you know a more entertaining build and less uh, tech oriented, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I like the the song choice in particular because. Um, when you think of really good songs, usually you think of, uh, you can go like different routes and one of the ways is to go more of a music cue oriented thing. And there's also like approach that deals with more of a overall scheming performance. So so if you think of it as of like Gentry versus Zach, Zach has like more of like an overall scheming type of build and Gentry has a more music cue type of build. Here, there is no music use category. It's more of just choreography and overall presentation. So that actually suits the kind of song that he used and the performance that he put oh, together. Totally, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, he is sick freestyle. Second, who we just mentioned really quickly is Hirotaka Akiba, who had like a very straightforward two minute tech based freestyle. He beat Yamato in tech, but lost in performance as we just discussed for you know number of reasons. But I thought his freestyle was awesome, and he really just went all out with in terms of tricks. I feel like he went all out. I feel like Hirotaka doesn't really fo put that much focus on evals in general. I feel like he always is just pushing the bar higher in terms of tech, but not really evals. Um, so I, I feel like going forward, I'd really like to see a more eval-based freestyle from him. Yeah, he's really good, but he always has room for he has room for improvement. Okay, in third, a very interesting freestyle, uh, Takeshi Matsura. <laughs> oh my god, my favorite freestyle of the contest, definitely. I, yeah. I pretty much had no level of expectation for this freestyle. I wasn't sure what to expect given that Takeshi, I don't think he's competed since Worlds 2016. I had no idea if he had new tricks to showcase. I had no idea if he planned on winning the contest or just doing a freestyle that wanted to be memorable. Well, obviously it was the latter, but I, I was really surprised by um, the introduction of his freestyle, the song choice, and um, bringing the contact juggling ball on stage. I think uh, all of it was very appropriate. Some, some notable things from this freestyle. One, he switched out in the beginning, which uh, is a switch out technically, but as Kieran said in the beginning, the switch outs are treated a little differently here. The other thing is that he went almost perfect, did all tech, and his first throw was like a minute and five seconds. And he got third, you know, given all the dead time that he had. But I think one of the pros of the Charmeleon, although I haven't played it yet, is that it can go for really long throws. So he can kind of jam in all these elements into one throw. Yeah, that was super cool. He used a giant yo-yo, which had many obviously a lot of inertia <laughs> so that was the top three and another notable one i sell from this contest was toru miyazaki toru in terms of uh japan league he hasn't competed since central japan 2016 he competed yeah. this year at hamakon and other than that i don't think he has been really participating in the scene so it was really interesting to see him uh, on the player list for joic again sort of like takeshi i had really no idea what to expect from him but uh, he ended up delivering a pretty sweet freestyle. Yeah, I really like some of his newer tricks. He had a f not so many new tricks, but the ones that he did have were like 
pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Overall, in terms of scoring, he obviously didn't fare too well because of the amount of mistakes. But, you know, the, the quality of tricks were, as always, pretty high. I, I have pretty high expectations for Toru just because I know sort of his level of ability and um, what he can bring to the table. Okay, so 2A. A lot of people who haven't freestyled in a while... So the winner of 2A was Shinji Saito, who hasn't competed in quite some time, probably uh, a year, two years. Um, came back, won with flying colors, 70 out of 70 tech, and like... He won by like a 20-point margin, pretty sure, uh, and most of that was tech. His evals aren't really that great, as always, but his tech always is above average, for sure. Yeah, in terms of Shinji, like, he, I don't think he had any new tricks in particular, but uh, it was just classic Shinji, you know, he just goes very clean, has moderately difficult tricks compared to the meta, you know, just so solid in everything he does. Yeah, I'm looking at the, the score sheet and it says the Duncan Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, I guess another really interesting thing about JYC is that players can only use yo-yos made by the sponsor of the event. So, oh, so right. that's, um, I guess that's why it sort of says the, their yo-yo model on this score sheet uh, which is really interesting i sort of don't know how to feel about that i can see it being an interesting incentive for companies to sponsor events so their players can you know act accurately like represent their brand it's pretty complicated from like a political standpoint but i think it works for the time being uh, in 3a hajime uh won and he won with a pretty solid lead although i think he could have potentially lost to Mizuki. Mizuki's kind of coming up there. Solid tricks. Okay uh, execution this time around, but you know, just more new tricks in this archetype he's been working on. It almost looks at f like 5A at this point. It's kind of interesting. I'm not a 3A player, but yeah, he's been killing it lately. Yeah, I feel like Hajime's edge now is just it's just because like he's the fastest 3A player. He has virtually no dead time, and a big thing why Mizuki didn't win was because Mizuki's tricks require a little bit more setup, and Hajime's, I feel like he's refined just to the point where he doesn't have to actually do yeah. much setup to get into these mounts, which is actually really interesting. And I can sort of see that becoming a new sort of meta tactic in 3A. Although he didn't beat Hajime, Mizuki had a really great freestyle. He came just, I think, under a point behind Hajime in terms of tech, and just a little bit lower than Hajime in terms of evals as well. But he went extremely clean and uh, delivered a lot of really cool new tricks that we haven't really seen since, I think, his 2015 Worlds um, and like 2016 Japan Nationals. So it was really interesting to see him sort of come back to the competitive scene. 4A was also very interesting this contest. A lot of interesting X divisions. Yeah, so Yuki Uchida won 4A, who is usually the type of player to have very, very solid execution, but kind of, I'm not going to say average tricks, but, you know, tricks that are based more around having a solid execution. But this time around, he had tricks that were riskier, but he hit them super cleanly, and I and kind of goes to show that like he might be pushing towards a more riskier type of freestyle and he could be you know starting to get up there yeah I, I i was really surprised actually by these results because i i definitely know uh, yuki to be yeah definitely more consistent but he generally delivers tricks that score a little bit below average makes up for that in eval um, i sort of know him to be really consistent in terms of place but I didn't actually think he was going to win, but he, he did with like a 69.1 in tech, which is out of 70, and actually really solid evals. He won by about 4 points in total, and honestly, like I was really surprised by his new tricks. They all score really well. Takumi Hakumara got second and had a freestyle that was obviously like awesome as usual with Takumi's rare tricks, but he kind of suffers in execution like a lot of his other freestyles. I was really surprised um, seeing Takumi score as high as he did, given all of his mistakes during his freestyle. It just really goes to show how you know dense his tricks are in terms of scoring, and um, I honestly didn't think he was going to get top three, but he did. Yeah, and third place in 4A, also probably another favorite of the contest next to Takeshi is uh, Hajime Miura's 4A freestyle, so he 
it is a two minute uh, division, by the way. So Hajime did one minute or so of regular foray and one minute of solo hem. It's important to note at Joycey that solo hem foray is not scored. So he got third place in foray with just pretty much one minute of tricks, which is really awesome. And his solo ham side of it was insane. It's probably the best solo ham he's done yet. And it kind of, it's kind of like a show of his skill in solo ham and how he's kind of rising and it might make solo ham viable to the point where it could score higher than regular foray. I feel like this is one of the more like controversial freestyles of the contest because um, a lot of people were confused as to why solo ham doesn't score. You know, a lot of people were amazed at his ability to you know, score just a little bit below Yuki in, in terms of the final score. I think he was just uh, like nine points behind Yuki with just a minute of regular foray. As well as his you know ability to transfer like solid evals to one of the styles that like, in music use in general is probably the hardest. I think it's, you know, Hajime is always pushing the bar higher in terms of that. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see um, how the shape of solo hum and foray in general moves especially as the division gets more popular okay everyone thanks for listening to us discuss the joycey 2017 freestyles there's a lot of really interesting takeaways i suggest you guys watch the freestyles themselves as well as the live clicker stream recap which is on spin gears facebook and we'll see you later see ya